Okay, lesson 5.3, we're talking about properties of operations. Um, properties of real numbers allow you to write equivalent expressions and simplify expressions. So that's why it's in here with chap in chapter 5 when we're talking about algebraic expressions and algebraic equations. Well, e algebraic expressions in chapter 5 and algebraic equations in chapter 6 because um, the properties help us to simplify um, and write them in different ways. So we will be spend the next day or two memorizing the mathematical properties. The commutative property of addition, um, technically, if you look at it, is A plus B equals B plus A. Um, I always give the example of the word commute. A lot of us know what the word commute means, um, which is a base word here of commutative. Um, commute means to move. You might hear your dad say he has a commute to work or your mom has a commute to work. They might have to drive um, from Overland Park to downtown, so they have to drive for 45 minutes. Um, that's why I have my little guy down here in the corner with the car, just to remind you that commute means to move, and that's what we're doing here. We have A plus B equals B plus A. We have the same numbers being added. They're just in a different order. So if I have 3 plus 5, I get 8. And if I have 5 plus 3, I will also get 8. So I can move those numbers and still get the same answer. Okay, commutative property of multiplication. Just like commutative property of addition, it means that I can take A times B or B times A and I will still get the same answer. So if I take 3 times 5, I'll get 15. And if I take 5 times 3, I will still get 15. So either way I write it, I will still get the same answer. So commutative property of multiplication allows me to flip those numbers around and I will still get the same thing. Okay, associative property of addition. Um, the way I like to explain this one is um, the base word of associative is associate. So if you think back to kindergarten, you've had a lot of the same kids in your class the whole time, but you may hang out with different kids than you did when you were in kindergarten. So if you look, you have A, B, and C are all in the class together still, but in kindergarten, A and B were friends. So they hung out in a group. But in seventh grade, A, B, and C are still in the class together, but now B and C associate together. So that's kind of how um, my trick for explaining it. You see A, B, and C are still in the same order. They're still there. If you want to think about it in the school terms, they're still in alphabetical order. Just that A and B hang out together now, or then, and B and C hang out together now. So I have a little picture of friends down here to show you to, uh, if you need a visual. So I have 3 plus 2 plus 6 equals 3 plus 2 plus 6. And here, 3 plus two, 3 and 2 are in the group, and here, 2 and 6 are in a group. So if we look, we're gonna, they're all in the same order. We're going to use order of operations, of course, because we always use order of operations. 3 plus 2 is 5, so I have 5 plus 6. And here I have, bring down my 3, and inside of my group I have 2 plus 6 is 8. So right now, these look like completely different addition problems. But if I do 5 plus 6, I get 11. And if I do 3 plus 8, I get 11. So even though they started out different with different groups, they ended up with the same answer. Associative property of multiplication, just like associative property of addition, the numbers are in the same order. They are just in different groups than what they... Um, we're on the other side. So if I have 2 times 3 times 6, that is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 6. And again, I use order of operations, so I do what's inside the groups first. So 2 times 3 is 6 times 6, and 3 times 6 is 18. 6 times 6 is 36, and 2 times 18 is 36. So even though they look like different problems, especially at this step, right, they look like completely different problems, we still get the same answer. 
identity property of addition. The way I like to explain this is um, the person that, um, the Miss Kalkman that wakes up in the morning without any makeup on is the same person that comes to school, but I've added makeup. Have I changed who I am at all? No, I've changed my appearance, but I haven't changed who I am at all. So I, that's the identity. You're not changing what the number is. You're adding something, but you're not changing what the number value is. So if I take three plus zero, I'm changing the way it looks because it's adding something to it. But in the end, it's still the exact same. It's still a value of three. Identity property of multiplication is just the same, but it's just with multiplication. So it's what can I multiply and by uh, a number by to change what it looks like, but not change its value. So if I have three times one, I still get a value of three. I've just multiplied something to it. Didn't change the answer or its value. It just changed the way it looked. Multiplication property of zero. You've known this since you were in third grade. Any number times zero is always zero. No matter what number it is, it's always zero. So if I have three times zero, I'm going to get zero. If I have negative five times zero, I'm going to get zero. If I have um, 1,253 times zero, I'm still going to get zero. If I have negative uh, 5,820 times zero, I'm still going to get zero. Any number times zero will always be zero. Always, always, always. Okay, number one, I look at this and I say six plus two equals two plus six. So I ask myself, what happened to these numbers? They moved, they're the same numbers, but they moved. And moved and commute are alike, so I know it's commutative. And I don't care if you abbreviate. It's commutative property of, and it's addition. So that would be what I write, commutative property of addition. Number two, I have five plus zero equals five. So sometimes people will think multiplication property of zero here, but it's not multiplying, and it's not times zero, so it's not zero. So then I think, okay, I added something, but I didn't change what it is. What was that? That was identity. This is identity property of addition. Number three, I have negative three plus five plus six equals negative three plus five plus six, but I have different groups. So that is the associative property, and we're using addition. So it's associative property of addition. Okay, number four, I have three times one equals three. So I'm multiplying it by something, but I'm not changing its value. So that would be my identity. Oh, I don't know why it's not writing. Identity property of multiplication. Number five, I have three times a times four equals three times a times four. My numbers did not change its order, so they didn't move, so that wouldn't be commutative. They just changed who they're grouped with. So that is the associative property of multiplication. Okay, 8 times 0 equals 0. This is the multiplication property of 0. I'd write property. Seven's a mistake. Skip it. Okay, eight. I have three x plus zero equals three x. So I added something on, but I didn't change the value at all. So that is the identity. Identity property of addition.